Hello, gorgeous. You're listening to The Girlfriend's Guide to Starting Over. On this podcast, we talk about everything from dating and relationships to personal development. We also speak very candidly about the F word, and by that, I mean failure. So grab a pen, tag a friend, and let's talk about it. All of it. Undergoing, overcoming, and simply trying to make it through. Hello, gorgeous. You're listening to the Girlfriend's Guide to Starting Over podcast, and I'm your host, Kayla. If you are just listening for the first time, then I want to say hello and welcome to my platform. I am so excited that you are here. And as always, if you are a returning listener, hey, sis, welcome back. So today we are back on schedule with our normally scheduled programming, and we are talking about authenticity And in this episode, we are going to dive into seven ways that we self-sabotage ourselves. Um, And many of these things are things we don't even think about. But when we're on a growth journey, when we're on an authenticity journey, when we're just navigating life, self-sabotage is big. And for those of you who don't know, self-sabotage is basically, it's either an intentional, sometimes unintentional action that basically it impedes your progress and it prevents you from getting your goals. It stops you from success. Um, And sometimes it's because we're afraid of success. Sometimes it's because of deep-rooted trauma from our family, from relationships. It could be because of anything, but many of us do it. And we're going to start identifying some of those things today. So first things first, we are practicing self-sabotage when we refuse to ask for help. I'm not really sure why, but it's very commonly stated that I need help are some of the hardest words in the English language for people to say. I need help. For whatever reason, we feel like when we need assistance, that it's some form of weakness. But the reality is that there is an immense strength that lies in the ability to recognize your strengths, to recognize where you could use support, and to be willing to be supported by someone else. Think about like when you see a friend or a loved one and they're really struggling and you're like, what can I do? How can I support you? And they're like, you can't. You feel really helpless, right? And it's like, there are so many things that I could do for you if you would allow it. We get to monitor ourselves through that same lens. So this week, I challenge you to look for ways that you can ask for help, even if it's allowing someone to hold the door for you or allowing if you go to like Kroger or Publix and they're like, can I help you out to your car? Even if it's allowing people to do those things, start asking for support when you need it. It's imperative to your mental health and it allows people to show that they care about you. Number two, we practice self-sabotage when we reject praise. Is it just me? Like when someone says, like, oh, I like your dress. You're like, oh, this whole thing, it has pockets. Like, it's so, it's hard. They're like, I like your hair. And it's like, oh, it needs to be retwisted or great work on that project. And it's like, oh, it wasn't that great. It's because for whatever reason, we have been taught to minimize our accomplishments, to minimize our appearance, to minimize anything great about ourselves. It's like this false notion that if you are, appreciative or confident in something that you've created or done, then it's bad. And it's not snooty. Just learn to say thank you. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Like practice not rejecting that someone is giving you praise or honoring you or celebrating you. That is a, that's a, that's a work. That's like, like, that is a work and it's a work in progress for me, but try to do that. Number three, Um, we practice self-sabotage when we isolate ourselves when we're hurting. Now, my introvert friends are going to be like, Kayla, I just like being alone. And that is true. However, comma, after you've had your moment to be alone, it's important that we surround ourselves in a, like a dome of love and support and affection and people who get it. If you have been through a really bad breakup or you got fired from your job or something really, really traumatic happened to you, it's important that you surround yourself with people who care. 
the more isolated you feel, the more likely you are to become depressed. So it's kind of like, oftentimes the hardest thing for us to do, which in those instances would be to socialize, is the best thing for you to do. So keep an eye on that. Um, number four, saying yes to everything. Eek! That is a form of self-sabotage, like not being able to say no. It is a form of people pleasing as well. But saying yes to everything ensures that you're depleted. It ensures that you don't have 100% to give everything. So then you feel guilty because you should have worked harder. You should have done this. And then you don't have time for yourself. And it's it starts this vicious cycle. And so I tell my clients very frequently that you should be very intentional with what you say yes to and what you say no to. Because when you start saying no to things, your yeses become more meaningful. So watch what you say yes to. Number five, putting your needs on hold. And I ran these together on purpose. Putting your needs on hold. How many times have we delayed our doctor's appointment, our eyeglass appointment, something that we needed to do. We can even break it down more simple than that. If you're listening to this and you're at work, get up and take your bathroom break. When you're working, how often do you omit taking a bathroom break? You just don't do it until you're almost like cannot hold it anymore. And then you're like, gosh, if I have, if I have an accident, I'm gonna have to go home. It's going to completely like destroy my work day, right? We do these things. Stop putting your needs on hold. Put it on the calendar and make sure it gets done because people are going to take care of themselves. So you better take care of you. You are your number one player. Number six, we get to stop self-sabotaging by procrastinating on important tasks. I know, and I'm making a face. If you're listening to the podcast on audio, I'm totally making a face because I was the world's worst procrastinator. I want you to know that procrastination is a coping skill, and we typically do it when we know something is going to take a lot of our time, when we know that something is going to be tedious, when we know it's a big job or it's going to make us anxious, we put it off. And the reality is it creates this emergency feeling in us, and then we're working super stressed out. And it's like, we can say if we don't get a good grade or the project doesn't go over well, we're going to say, oh, well, I started at the last minute. Well, ma'am, you knew about it for months. And so the way that I have combated this is every single time that I think about a project, because I know I'm not going to start when I should, I do just a little bit, just a little Google search. I jot down a little bit. So when I'm sitting down and it's, you know, three, four, five nights before it's due, I'm sitting down to actual data. I'm sitting down to actual work. I'm not sitting down to a blank slate. And it has changed the game for me. Every single time it pops into my mind, whatever the task is, I think of one or two little things that I can do right in that moment so that the end game is not so crushed together. So consider that. Lastly, I have really harped on that this month, is we we self-sabotage, guys, when we try to be perfect. When we try to be perfect. And it has been the biggest lesson of unlearning because I was raised in a family where excellence was the expectation. There was no plan B. Plan A was to be successful. There is no plan B. And I know that I'm not the only one, but when you set yourself up as a perfectionist, you are setting yourself up to fail. You're setting yourself up to be anxious. You're setting yourself up to fall short. You're setting yourself up to be depressed. And so learning to prioritize progress over perfection, to celebrate where you've grown, to celebrate what's going well, to celebrate how you're better than you were, that is major key. So I hope that you have had time to write down, jot down a couple of these, recognize some of these things that you do or did not recognize that you do, but now you know, and I hope that this will help you on your journey. I love you, girl. I can't wait to see you, girl, and we will chat in the next one. Well, gorgeous girl, that's a wrap for this episode. I hope you found value, insight, or strength. I hope something was said that gave you the courage to push on a little while longer toward the life of your dreams. If you felt motivated during this segment, screenshot this and throw it in your stories and tag me on social. That way we can keep the message going. Have an excellent day on purpose and we girl will talk in the next one.